what is this thing that makes it so we can that this is even happening that we can measure it through the stars and through the planets right that we can measure down to ourselves at the time of our birth and get all this amazing information and it's through the agency of the neutrino um every star every single star has in it this manufacture of this neutrino and you should look it up neutrino just means little neutral one it's neutral and it's wicked small it's a, one of the smallest atomic particles that we have ever measured and uh, when human zion was coming out is when they first really started you know seriously looking for it and what happens is as it pours out of the stars it pours into everything and this the neutrinos like the breath of stars these neutrinos that pour out of stars think about all the stuff that comes out of a star stars an amazing factory right all the elements come out of stars every iron nickel cadmium carbon you me we all come from stardust um energy is coming out of there solar flares that give us aurora borealis all kinds of electromagnetic stuff comes out of there another thing that comes out of the manufacturing deep in the furnace of the star is as material breaks apart are these tiny little neutrinos they're about a millionth the size of a proton so they're very light but they do have mass and trillions per square inch everywhere in the universe if there's a star has trillions three four trillion per square inch pouring through us right now um moana and, and pouring through you trillions of them what happens is as the planets get in the way uh, which they do uh, as the planets move the neutrino ocean pouring in from all directions and mostly from our sun but from all directions they get imprinted by the planets because the planets will picture it there's a stream pouring through it's just an ocean moving through towards us they move in a straight line by the way just like any piece of matter straight line until acted upon they come mars is over in this quadrant mars is somewhere in the wheel and it's about to activate a gate in your body graph or the sun or anything the moon you name it so mars gets in the way uh, is in the way over in this one particular spot well it's going to color that neutrino ocean pouring through a certain way here on earth the genome is so intelligent it reads that difference and what it does is that says, oh, Mars is over here. It's activating this genetic codon in my design. I will now have gate 41 and I will hunger with a good fantasy life for new experiences. I have a gate 64. I will work through things in confusion um, until I get to clarity. Um, and that'll be my process. All the gates. And that's how the neutrino is affecting us because it's pouring in on us at the time of our birth as soon as the baby comes out and it's separate from its mother it does lots of things right it knows to breathe it knows to be different it's now in a different medium it knows to take in oxygen its genome knows to read the difference pouring from the stars through our solar system colored by the planets and then into the baby and the baby picks up its formatting and that's how we get a human design chart when a neutrino photon reaches the surface of the sun, it will take nine minutes for the photon to reach the Earth, with the neutrino taking very slightly longer than the photon. Neutrinos move ever so close to the speed of light, the fastest speed possible, but not quite. We'll find out more later in the video. Neutrino means little neutral one. Neutral because it ignores electric charge, which is how it avoids encounters with stuff, atoms. When you touch something, the tiny electromagnetic forces pushing back from the object cause it to feel solid. In a technical sense, no particles are touching. Electromagnetic forces carried by the electrons in all atoms push against each other. To us, it makes things feel solid. But when we zoom in, it's force fields that are doing all the work. An atom, if scaled up to the size of a football stadium, would be mainly empty space. A marble-sized nucleus would be in the center, with electrons whizzing around the rest of the space, defining the territory of the atom with their electromagnetic force. When things touch, it's the electrons pushing off each other through electromagnetism, not the nucleuses colliding. Neutrinos don't feel electromagnetism. To them, matter is basically incorporeal. So from what I gathered from what you said, and from what the video said, is 
I remember from high school, we have protons and neutrons and electrons. Yes. Yep. And I knew neutrons were neutral. Protons were positive and electrons were negative. That part, I was like, okay, I get it. Then as science went along, I, I when we talked about matter, right? Like your particles are closer together when you're a solid thing and further apart when it's gas. Totally. But, yeah. right, as physics has, um, you know, come along, they figured out that we may, like, appear solid, but we're actually mostly empty space. Mostly empty space. We are mostly empty space, and we are, all of our, you know, electrons and particles are vibrating Probably. and yep. how close or far you are is what determines if you're solid or liquid or a gas so that mm. part very rudimentary yeah. science but class even in the liquid the gas or the solid all the atomic material mm -hmm. if it's hydrogen gas all the hydrogen is still made up of hydrogen atoms mm -hmm. and those atoms are as he was describing there's a little tiny nucleus in an atom and mm -hmm. a big shell around it and yeah. you take and like you said if you scale it up to a basketball stadium you know mm -hmm. you, you see a little marble in the center court and the electron would be flying way around the outside and that mm -hmm. picture that we paused on we were all would be all the trillions of neutrinos pouring even right through the atoms so you could have a wall of lead you mars gets in the way and they pour right through mars because they're just mm -hmm. pouring through all the atomic material they're neutral they don't like a mat like a magnetic force they don't get stuck but they're still very small the nucleus of a atom is very mm -hmm. small compared to the whole radius of the atom, the whole sphere of the atom, because the electrons flying around the outside. Right. So neutrinos cell. are much, much smaller than electrons, neutrons, yep. Yep. protons, all the things. Yep. Yep. So got that. And the next thing that I got is they come as, I guess, a byproduct of the sun. The sun sends us all sorts of stuff. He, yep. you know, electromagnetism, it, solar it, flares, electric, you name magnetic. it, light, light photons like the things, that the plants live on yeah there's also other things shooting out and neutrinos were one of the things that was discovered now when i was quickly looking this up apparently the star is not the only thing that sends neutrinos it's anything also big like enough anything big jupiter enough Jupiter is the jupiter. other thing i saw can yep. also yep. send neutrinos now Humanoid, for the first time ever yeah. as far as the universe is concerned um humanity produces its yeah. own neutrinos in nuclear reactors mm -hmm. we're now adding to the neutrino field of the universe we're communicating with the universe because as these think about it so they're they're material in nature in other words they have mass they can't they don't they're not traveling at the speed of light mm -hmm. only if it's truly massless no mass will it travel at the speed of light that's just a fact. Nothing with mass can ever quite reach the speed of light. If it did, it would become infinitely massive. Uh, that's that's just a okay. conundrum so, inside our universe. Perfect. So for anyone who is still like me, just digesting it part by part, what we have so far is a neutrino yep. is going, uh, coming from the sun. Some come from Jupiter. They are. And every star. Mass. Every star, every star, yeah. almost massless, and they basically go through right through everything, us. right? And through everything, because everything again is nothing is really solid. We know with we one are, exception. With There's one an exception. exception. There's an important exception. Mm -hmm. It is still material. It's still okay. atomic in nature. So you have trillions pouring through Mars, but one or two out of every trillion, or four, ten, or eighty not many, will bump into a piece of matter inside the planet. It just accidentally, finally, sooner or later, it will hit a proton and dead end there. Sooner what or later. What does that mean? Like well, when that happens? Well, well I'm, um, you're in a car and you run into another car. Generally, you don't run head on. So you end up on the right side in a ditch and they end up on the other side in a ditch because somehow or other, you weren't square head on where you both stopped in the exact same spot that's rare right mm -hmm. in a car accident world of car accidents is rare two cars come to a dead stop because 
they were exact equal opposite forces bam and they stopped right ah, okay. look at neutrinos like that so they're rip, ripping through mars and you and me and the vast majority of you know 99.999 percent of all the neutrinos are just pouring through but a very small percentage will run into uh the nucleus of a hydrogen atom of a lead atom of of something they'll run into it and they'll stop that's okay i mean just like the two cars right um every okay. planet stops a different amount of neutrino uh, okay so depending on the planet it colors the neutrino feed coming into the baby slightly differently slightly beyond gravity is something appropriately called the weak force this force only extends a tiny range much smaller than the diameter of the nucleus the marble in the center of the football stadium because of this, it's extremely unlikely that a neutrino will bump into any part of an atom and will sail through it like it's not even there. Okay, so that's what you, you mentioned. Like that's it will true. sail through it most likely. Sometimes it'll pause. So yep. this is a lovely little diagram. And this is exactly what we were talking about. All, all the different things the sun emits, like right? radio waves. Yep. Right. Coronal yep. loops. That's the first time I'm seeing that word. So, yep. Well, it's just a coronal discharge. It it it, it emits uh, X rays, gamma rays, radio waves. It it emits right. light. Light is a wave. It emits radi various types of radiation. It uh -huh. emits. Uh, uh, it has an electromagnetic discharge, which are all the stuff coming off the sides you see in the white. That's just a giant electromagnetic storm on the sun. It's a right. furnace. Inside the furnace, it's creating all the heavier elements. Right, everyone knows yes. in the furnace of the stars comes all the heavier elements. Right. Um, so does so that mean neutrinos are also coming from like the the center the of furnace. the furnace? Yeah, and it says it right okay. here. It's pointing out. So in the center of our sun, fourteen million degrees Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Um, it's hot. Yeah. And um, out of that comes pouring the neutrino, and it takes mm -hmm. a while to get. It takes a little while to just pour right out of the sun, even because it's mm -hmm. it's traveling at near the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And now, boom, because it's pouring right through the sun, even as it's created, mm -hmm. as it's created, it, pour, it starts moving even through the heat dense stuff inside the sun. Mm -hmm. It's just it's whizzing out. It's like I, you say you're hot. I don't feel it. You say I got to stop it. I don't see it. It just whizzes through everything. And once, right, it's, right. once it's out, it's gone. Oh, out yeah. In a straight line. In a, wherever it started, it stays in that trajectory as right. it passes through everything. It just keeps going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> yes, literally forever. Uh, um, essentially forever. There's nothing that would stop it until it oh, that's bumps into so something. so wild. Okay. So think about the universe as this crisscross malaise of a neutrino haze, because that's what it is. If we could have, if our vision could see them, we're lucky our vision stops us at visible light. I mean, it'd be cool if we could see some other things, but we, it would be confusing. So... It stops at visible light. That's all we could see. If we could see what the neutrino field looked like, we wouldn't see anything. You and I would be whited out. Everything would be like a white out snowstorm. Um, and well, you wouldn't that's see wild. That's one yep. way to look at it, I guess, is they're so tiny. It's like way smaller than a snowflake. Yeah. That yeah, obviously, much wow. smaller than snowflake. And we're just we're, we're in a haze of it at all times. It's always pouring through. And it's distinctly pouring through from all the locations in the universe, especially our uh, our sun, Jupiter, um, some mm -hmm. of the stuff we produce, and piles of it is pouring in from each of the constellations. Right, yeah, because constellations are also made up of stars. Okay, got it. Now yes. let's see what comes next. Uh -huh. So, so here we are. Any mm -hmm. this is pick picture this as any star. This could be in Orion's belt. This could be our sun. This could be anything. On the left hand side, there's just these neutrinos are just pouring through. Right, right. you see them all. Uh, on the right hand side, you see that um, the flow of the neutrino to the Earth, and then the flow of the neutrino into the DNA. And yes, not, so this is the part where I'm like, okay, how does this imprint? Because there's two two ways, of course, it, you know, you look at your human design on two sides, right? You're unconscious and you're conscious. Your unconscious comes in, what, the first four? Three months. 
three first about, three months. Just under three months before birth, and then the personality is conditioned and, and set in place. Um, Afterwards. Uh, so explain how that works. So, we, you know, we're showered by neutrinos. You know, you have baby in the womb. And what exactly is happening to... The baby at the moment of its zygote, at the moment of conception. Right. Um, and creation, we'll call it, um, which is a miracle all by itself, obviously. At the moment of the miracle... Mm -hmm. There's a genetic program running. Mm -hmm. That baby has every bit of genetic juice it's going to have its whole life, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that we can we have a hard time measuring it. I wouldn't want to dissect one, but I'm just getting it. It's like it's it's all there, mm -hmm. all the genetic material needed to create. So that by the time that baby's about six months in the womb, mm -hmm. and it's really there's an exact calculation. It's called 88 degrees of the sun prior to birth, but it doesn't matter. It's about three months. Mm -hmm. So after about six months. The first part of the baby is now totally made enough. Mm -hmm. And there is um, essentially the beginnings of a neocortex. The neocortex is now there. Mm -hmm. That's the inside that right here, third eye, is where the design crystal physically sits. It mm -hmm. sits there and it just hovers and waits there our whole life and being part of what keeps us together. Mm -hmm. At that time, it's not an actual crystal, by the way. If anyone's yep. wondering, it's, it's 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 just what the terminology is. Yep, absolutely, it, well, because that helps us understand. Because crystals mm -hmm. filter things, um, mm -hmm. so it's just there to let you know it's filtering. Mm -hmm. The neutrino stream, um, the that that crystal of consciousness essentially is brought into the body, it becomes called into the body, and or it's awakened, and the neutrino feed starts to pour through it. The entire feed pours through the crystal. It's still okay. pouring through everything well, else. Let's let's look at, I guess, a um, like a physical example of it. So, would it be kind of like you know, let's say you have a light, and you know those like colored filter things they can put yeah. on, so then yep. the light changes yep. the color, like the use, outside. Use a crystal. You know how you put a crystal in front of the light; it refracts it all different across over the wall, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and so no it's two similar. crystals do the same. No two crystals will do the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Ever. You won't get the exact same light pattern and diffraction and rainbow or whatever if you take a flashlight through a crystal as one crystal as you will with another. They'll okay. be slightly different. Sure. So, yep. okay. So, again, layman's terms <laughs> baby, hit womb, neutrinos are passing through, and it is affecting from like baby cell zygote stage yep and it's continually being showered with showered. Neutrinos. the entire time it's in utero and, and out of utero but for yep. the sake of what we're talking about with the body graph we're talking about how that then manifests there's two key yeah there's in, two key yeah. moments so the two key moments are Again, the, for anyone they, they small are like me, <laughs> 88, degrees, 88 degrees of the sun prior to birth, the design is set in place. It's given its design. It becomes all the red stuff we see on the left hand side of a body graph, all the planets and numbers we see there that are your design. So why is that uh, important? Uh, or the how, 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 I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? So, like, for example, it is believed in, you know, the spiritual community that your soul attaches in utero only f once you're four months in utero well that's Not pretty dang that. close that's pretty dang close so they were they were on to something when they were seeing that it happens to be six months but you know it was and and i can't espouse to know exactly what the neutrino ocean isn't doing to the right. entirety of the body all the way up to them i just know that at the time we get the information we can read into a body graph it's uh -huh. six months uh -huh. into the thing Ah, okay. So six months into the to thing, however, the neutrinos happen to be flowing at that exact time. At that exact is, time. In, that's why it's so important to know what time you were born. Because without that, it's not accurate information, right? So, because when, so, it's like a snapshot of your body at that exact, what's the word? Exact time. At that snapshot, exact time. time. At that exact right. time. Right. Think like, about it. This design crystal is actually helping. It helps format. It does format the genome. Essentially, the genome is ready to basically be imprinted with these with these codon structures that will then act out in the life as they live out their life. It's ready for that imprinting. Their behavior. Look at it as a behavioral imprint. 
what exact specific behaviors is this little is this little guy gonna have in what proportion and what order how show me the body graph that will show us all the behaviors of this kid how this kid right. is gonna navigate and that's make the red part like you said of the body well, graph. It's both it's both, oh, it's both. okay yeah. so because you mentioned the 88 degrees that's the first part which is the yep. red right yep. then the second part is when is at birth mm -hmm. at birth is another time and now these two things are separated in time which means they're separate so ultimately, the, now the personality crystal receives its formatting. It's not even really ready to receive formatting until the baby's already, basically the baby's being born at the time of its formatting. And so uh, all the work is being done by the design crystal. The design crystal and the magnetic monopole and all this stuff are basically working in conjunction with the baby's body. It receives its conditioning and its formatting from the stars from the stars at the time at 88 degrees at three months before birth and then at birth the personality crystal comes along and it's like hey i'm here i'm late to the party let's get rolling and it uh -huh. says okay here's your, here's your marching orders here's your role in life here's what you're going to be here's the thing here's yours here's your personality's black line set of aspects that we're going to go into your body graph and then boom the physical body which is a chemical thing right genetic and fingers and toes flesh and blood has a design and then a personality is married up to that mm -hmm. and it has a design it's different the personality has no form the personality mm -hmm. is who we think we are it's our consciousness it's right people, right. people would call it part of the soul people uh, who knows what you can call There's lots of names for this thing all i know is what, what i know is that it becomes this who we think we are it's this self-reflective passenger consciousness that is riding in a body that has a design itself that if you took the passenger out the body would be fine if you took the body out the passenger dies i just got that so i always knew that they were two separate things the red and the black, the black in the body yep. graph. but the fact that they are still separate entities but one can clearly go on without the other Right. It's kind of wild. Right. <laughs> right. It's just like, what? Right. Hold on. So That's crazy. the personality crystal, I mean, the design crystal sits here, right, at the third eye, <clears throat> inside yeah. the eyes, inside the body. It's like you can look at it as the yin. It is mother. Mm -hmm. It is the material because it's mm -hmm. the flesh and the blood. So it's totally welcome inside the body. The personality is foreign to it, but it's needed so that the body can have something to self-reflect. So when the personality comes in, you can't self-reflect if you're just one. You need a juxtaposition. <laughs> right. right? It's, it's so, uh, you need you know, two. You always need a duality. So this is tripping me out a little. Now, if any anyone has done any sort of mindfulness exercises or meditations and things and whatever, right, that's one of the things that you talk about is be the observer. And you'll notice that whatever your mind is thinking and doing and whatever is not you like you're able to step back and witness your monkey mind as you know it jumps from thought to thought to thought and now i just made the connection that the observer is observing is, all of that is the body and the monkey mind is the observer the is the personality oh it's the observer the is monkey mind yeah, stuff is the conditioning the monkey uh, mind stuff is the condition, and we can't ever avoid conditioning. Not all conditioning right. is bad, you know, because we're being conditioned all the time. It's about being right. aware of ourselves within it. Um, okay. And so the passenger is the witness. It's witnessing its very busy mind try to have all the stuff pour through. So you got an open Ajna, everything's pouring through. You got a defined Ajna. Uh, you think you think you're thinking everything. Um, either way, just everything's pouring through. And, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, when you're meditating is a really good example of when people can witness that they're witnessing something that isn't them. I don't know if you're familiar with um, this spiritual teacher that came out of India. His name is Sad Guru. Yeah. And he has this mantra that is incredibly effective when you feel like nothing is under control and everything's going to the poop shoot. <laughs> right. Or your mind is going crazy, which is, I am not the body. I am not even the mind. So how does that relate? 
Um, Sat Guru and all those guys that that do that exact discipline, they're all very much on to something. Um, mm -hmm. I never hear them mention human design, so either they don't, I don't know why. They probably have no idea what it is. Um, Most likely. So, but what they're on to, and what both Eastern and Western um, astrology has been on to, and what good meditating is on to, no matter East or West, it doesn't matter, is you're on to the fact that I have a passenger consciousness. It is self-reflective, and it is my personality. It's who I think I am. Mm -hmm. and, and and until I start to realize I have I'm have a companion I'm with I'm with my design my body's design which mm -hmm. is separate from me and has its own consciousness right. think of it, why why do you have a strategy if your body doesn't have its own awareness and its own consciousness you need that strategy to see it mm. as a, I'm a generator the more I witness my responsiveness is perfect the more I see that responsiveness is not who I think I think I am it's different Mm -hmm. when you're when you're meditating you're watching all the stuff go through and you've got a passenger witnessing that's not really me that stuff is yeah. pouring through but i'm mm -hmm. still witnessing it and i'm in a body and i notice i've been able to be in tune with the body somehow good enough that i can even meditate in the first place mm -hmm. it's the only time because as soon as you're out of the meditation you're back in the rat race i gotta pay bills i gotta get to work i gotta do the thing I gotta <laughs> get through that, I like that guy you know and boom back into the conditioning feel like need to be afraid of this we don't have enough all the stuff now now you're not you again so mm -hmm. meditating other places where you're only you when you're laughing your butt off in those moments you're laughing you're you when you're listening to a piece of music and you're swept away you're you when you're in tears you're you when you're making love you're you generally if you're at least if you're present um um dancing, dancing. when you're like just completely uh, when I'm playing my piano, there's moments I'm gone. When you're reading a good book and you get swept away, when you're watching a good movie, you get swept. So there's plenty of times that we're there. You know, right. when you're daydreaming, mm. when you're if you're just daydreaming, you're gone. You're not here. Ish. I mean, you know, you'll smell smoke if there's a fire. I assume, but <laughs> we can't. Yeah, we can't completely check out. The chi seems like a life force, and the life force exists within the prana, and a prana is this sort of this breath between two things so the prana between the sun and us has a neutrino ocean between us and in that neutrino ocean we're being formatted okay. um, so we're being we're being formatted again if you look at your body graph you'll always notice you only have about 20 activations give or take one or two everyone's the same mm -hmm. that means 44 active 40 uh, 44 activations you don't have you're mostly open so the definition is just getting us to where are our life forces and our ways in and amongst the rest of the openness open to all the other people's is in their life forces and their ways so we're open to them now mm -hmm. look at this this is a great example um, right. as, as the um neutrino field is pouring in on us right um we are this moving through space mm -hmm. See this? So that's the sun. And it's showing the sun's moving about, what, uh, 300 and something kilometers uh, an hour through uh, uh, through the solar system, uh, through the g galaxy. Mm -hmm. And the planets are circling the sun, all of them, because we're stuck in tow and we're all moving at the same speed, but we're moving around the sun. And, and the moon is ripping around us. And we're all moving. Look at the dance of all, these are all the planets. So this is, so here we are moving through space. So what's happening? To all these planets as it's relative to the neutrino field the neutrino field is pouring in all over the place you can totally see why we need exact time we keep changing location yeah see this is exactly what i was thinking too is so angel mentions that prana is also life force because it just comes from the yogic and ayurvedic traditions from mm -hmm. india so prana oh. you move you feel it uh, <laughs> a lot when you're in a very painful pose in yoga that you're holding it and like you're shaking right and that's like oh yeah that's that's your your life force energy you're like you can really feel it let's pretend that that far out one is earth so there's a neutrino field coming in from 360 degrees in a giant sphere from every single star every single solar system out in the world our sun all the constellations it's just pouring in at some point in time, there's a beeline of that directly to Earth, obviously. And so look at any of the two planets to the left. 
they are somewhere in the wheel around Earth, around us. So that the two planets up top, again, I don't know which ones they are, they are going to filter the neutrino fields coming in on that baby mm-hmm. and in, in that particular hexagram, wherever mm-hmm. that those planets are in the wheel. Okay. They're going to activate that hexagram. Let's pretend that very top planet is still Earth again. Just okay. For ease. Yeah this one all the other planets the little ones the big ones are now on a totally different place they're in Mm -hmm. different places uh, around the wheel relative to us so they will now be filtering once again the neutrino field from that direction Uh, and that so right now let's pick the planet that's way down the lowest um right below the sun this tiny little guy right below the sun sure that one yeah so that's in a constellation that's a that constellation's uniqueness is pouring through that planet because that's the constellation it's in relative to us on on earth Mm -hmm. so we're going to get the unique juice out of that constellation and it's going to go directly into a hexagram and that hexagram will now be activated in us every constellation traverses about four hexagrams five and um about five actually and and so so as soon as we move that planet's now going to activate a different code on a different hexagram in the body graph because it'll be in a different place that very mm-hmm. same planet earth is totally in the mix with everything now so baby's mm-hmm. being born now that little planet from before is now way above it it's mm-hmm. now so the the same neutrino ocean is always pouring in yeah it's just the planets that keep moving mm-hmm. so the planets basically are saying hey i'm mars i i end up stopping this amount of neutrinos at this rate oh i'm jupiter i interfere with this amount of neutrinos at this rate Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Pluto. I'm way out here. I hardly interrupt any, but I interrupt some Mm -hmm. and uh, at this rate. So wherever I am around the wheel is where ultimately we're going to receive now its uniqueness. Mm. We're going to receive its uniqueness and wherever we are in the wheel, there's going to be a constellation behind it, delivering part of that uniqueness. How is it those astrology guys were on to the fact that somehow or other, we seem to be affected depending on where the planets are relative to the constellations behind it. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. That's what that was their whole shtick. They're like, Saturn is affecting you because it's in the house of of of, of, of Orion or or of Pegasus, whatever the constellation of Sagittarius, <laughs> of, of Aries. It's in Aries. This person has an Aries thing and Jupiter's a little bit different than when Mars is there. We're sensing these slight differences. Yeah, you're sensing slight differences. They're coloring the neutrino field differently. So that's pretty insane. Those guys were onto deep science. Mm-hmm. We just can measure it now because we've got all these incredible measurement tools. That's why we can even draw a diagram like this. The the accuracy of where we can tell you each planet is is to is within a meter or two. Mm-hmm. They couldn't judge that back then. They didn't yeah. have accuracy to within a meter. They had accuracy to within, hey, it's it's over there, you know, <laughs> it's up there. So they had accuracy, but it wasn't to within a meter. It wasn't to within mile. It, they, their accuracy was a blunt object compared to the accuracy we have now, obviously. So they could only roughly measure. And in their <laughs> rough measurements, they were like, oh, my God, here's we're, here's astrology. And it is telling us something. They're right. The astrology guys were totally on to something. They were mm-hmm. right. And it was an amazing science. They just didn't have the rest of the scientific terms to flesh it out in in, in ways you could say equals MC squared and formulas like that. But they had their own formulations. And they yeah. were right. They were right. We are deeply affected by where the planets are based on the, the constellation that's in the background. Mm-hmm. Period. And so this is this is that you see the planets keep shifting. Ergo, the planets all show up in a wheel. I mean, all show up in the wheel around the sun. This is a full sequence of probably a bunch. There's a bunch of genes on here. This is our genome. This is a full spiral. It's probably a whole chromosome here. Mm-hmm. When you blow it up, it's not so hard to imagine that if there's an ocean of stuff pouring by it, <laughs> maybe it's picking it up. You can mm-hmm. look at the neutrino field like a vast information feed. We were asked a question. So what is the difference between a sun slash star neutrino and a planet? Or is it all the same? No, and there's then a the difference. The stars create the neutrinos. The neutrinos mm-hmm. come flying out um, unique. Every neutrino is unique like a snowflake, like everything. 
and then the planets affect the neutrinos in as much as they stop some of them mm -hmm. at a certain rate that's also the planet gets in the basically mars it's colors like a block it. yeah like, yeah it, mars colors it there's a neutrino stream pouring through mars mars stops certain amount of them at a certain rate in a certain way that's that, look at it like it colors it the genome this when it blows up you can see oh maybe that thing is intelligent enough to pick up the difference it's Mars like is, the example I was using before, right? So you have the light, and then you just put the, yeah. the color filter the colors, in front, yeah. and it just changes the way the the light is is the light showing. Looks. And every planet oh, acts as a filter, a different filter filtering the neutrino feed coming in slightly differently. If you were to sit there as a catcher and catch a bunch of neutrinos coming through <laughs> Jupiter, the pattern on your piece of paper you're holding up would look different than the pattern if you were in front of Mars. If you're in front of Pluto, if you're in front of Saturn or the moon, each time it would look slightly different. The moon's only going to stop some of them. Jupiter's going to stop more of them. If they all color that. Ah, they, so that's the color, point of having color the, the colored chromosome. Okay, got it. Now. Yeah, just to show us. Look at that. Boom, comes back. See how everything's ripping around? You recognize that hopefully people have seen this wheel. This is a calculation. We're calculating someone's body graph. So hopefully everyone has seen the human design wheel, the mandala. Mm -hmm. We use these in um, astrology. We use a wheel, right? The houses, we use it in all kinds yeah. of things. We use a wheel. In music, circle of fists is a wheel. Um, so all this is saying is that a planet is going to be in one of these hexagrams around the wheel at the time of your birth. The plant, all the objects we use in the human design body graph, the sun, the earth, the nodes of the moon, the, all the outer planets, inner planets, all of them, they're all in a location around this wheel. Ah, uh, okay. They're, it doesn't matter which one. They're in a location. That's mm -hmm. the location that gets turned on and brought into the body graph. Okay. That's why we need to know the exact time because it tells exactly where the planets are. And look, we're such smart little devils. We figured out how to read our own genome. Look around the top of this wheel. It may be hard to see, but you can see there's the names of the 64 different codons. Yeah, Argazine, yeah. Argon, Arg, Argon, Arg, yes. yeah. Thiazine, all the various zines. There's a 64 of them. And it even gives the three-letter combination that is them, which geneticists know how to read. They know how to read UCGA, UCGA. It's constantly repeating in different ways. Mm -hmm. So... At the time of your birth, basically, all these things are ripping around us, and you can see the name of the codon that is then activated. That codon in, in our life creates a certain characteristic, character, content, and a behavior in us, and we can rely on that. It will always be that. It will always be there. Let the thing run one more time, just so you can get a sense of, oh, the planets are spinning around. Let's lock it in place. Where are we? Hold on. Where are they? Oh. Spin the wheel, wheel of fortune, where are we going to land? And boom, it starts. And so we're over here. Hold on a second. Where, what time is it? It's exactly now. Okay, stop. There's your formatting. There's your design. You did This happens at 88 degrees of the sun beforehand. And then at the time of your birth, here's the personality. It gets the same thing happens. Where did everything line up? Oh, we have a planet in gate number 11. We have a planet in gate number this, and then we have a planet in gate number that. The sun is here. The moon is there. The earth is here. All of that is what's activated in the body per the named codon around the outside. This is, again, it's not a belief system. It's a scientific system. You simply have to be willing to empirically observe it so you can do what all good scientists do. Observe what the heck you're seeing. Mm -hmm. So everyone's a scientist, a little scientist, once they start observing things, mm -hmm. everyone, no exceptions. So anyone who wants to enter their human design experiment can say, oh, my God, I am this way and I'm not any other way. Mm -hmm. I'm this way. And everyone we read for when they realize what way they are, what happens? They're suddenly put at ease, essentially. You mean I have permission to be me? <laughs> right. And it's right. Yeah, that's exactly the, what I saying Let's yeah, see. That's one of the aspects that takes place so and this last one um it's just to show the complexity of how unique everyone truly is um you don't have to memorize any of this stuff on this slide or even anywhere else really just understand that as the neutrino 
rips through the personality and the design crystal trillions per second the personality design these two crystals of consciousness that are filtering this feed for us giving us our 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 really basically informing our our um our, our programming has three different frequencies four really it has the first thing it does is it comes in and it hits this crystal of consciousness one neutrino at a time pouring through it creates a frequency we call that base and then there's five different possible bases they're listed here one through five and then on the inside of the crystal of consciousness at that moment it creates another frequency because now it's inside the crystal there's six of those possible frequencies that's called tone as it exits the design the design or the personality crystal the exit frequency is different look at it like the trajectory of a bullet we do it in forensics with a bullet all the time there's the now entrance wound. makes sense it's this there's white thing wound. we're looking at it goes in in yep. in out 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 oh, boom to a gate now you got a gate so look at all oh, these it calculations. leaves out of a gate it, it, it goes out and and is the gate so basically the neutrino came in it hit the it came in let's say again i like mars mars is in the 40 is in the 25th gate so that's the gate you're about to have but before it gives you exactly what's the very color and uniqueness of that gate it hits the crystal of consciousness at that moment of your birth creates a, a base frequency it rattles around the inside creating a tone these are just names and it exits creating a color six different colors and on that exit suddenly it gives you the line you know how you're a four one that yes. four was determined in this manner it could you could have been a five one if you were born two hours later you'd be a five one right so uh, like all of us two hours later we some were something else slightly right different. because the exact moment is is right. not the same okay right. so and then once you have the line you obviously have the line that's within the gate so mm -hmm. Four, a five times six times six times five out into the gate times six out into the gate. There is a uh, one thousand and sixty different possibilities for each gate. And that's just 1, the gate, and there's the a gate. lot of gates. <laughs> there's a lot of gates. So just think of how unique everyone truly is. There's a thousand and sixty yeah. different. I hope I remember that number right. It might be a thousand and thirty and a thousand and eighty. <laughs> it's a thousand sixty. I'm going with different variations of exactly the very character of your exact imprinting. When mm -hmm. I read a chart, I'm reading everything that is the line in the gate. I'm not even reading the color, the tone, and the base. Mm -hmm. Once you get to the base, you can't read it. No one's in touch with their base frequency. It's so fast. It's not really part of our way, but it is part of our trajectory, and it is part of who we are. But you can't mm -hmm. read to it. It's just too minute. Um, you can read to a gate. Oh, Moana, you have 36 and 35, so you know all about crisis or something like that, right? right. Or you know about the feelings of an emotional wave. That's at the mm -hmm. gate level that I'm reading for you. And then, oh, look at your profile. You're a four one. There's real specific things. That's at the line level. I never read the tone and the color and the base for you or anyone or even for me hardly. Um, mm -hmm. It's 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 all of our information is in the line and the gate. But I'm just letting you know the exact nature of your four one profile and your 36 and your 35 and all your other whatever in your body graph mm -hmm. are so uniquely determined to be moana because it came in at an exact split second bass frequency it rattled around the inside tone frequency it had to then come out a certain frequency the color before it right. ever got to a line and a gate so two seconds later someone is different that's yeah. why everyone is but we can't read to that difference easily at all i can't mm -hmm. read that that's we're too clumsy with our language we're too clumsy with our awareness there's no way i can't read that mm -hmm. But it's there. So mm -hmm. why is everyone so different? Here's why everyone's so different. Ah, so we have some from comments. We have, uh, so I thought Jupiter sent out some of its own different neutrinos because it it's does. a larger planet. For about 4% of our neutrino feed between 3 and 4% comes from Jupiter. Okay. So Jupiter is coloring us a very particular way. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, the fact that the planets are like a net. So it. Yep. 
it's colors, bits of fluff that is created and is going through the different masses on right. the way from the source to your own little net. Right, 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 exactly. And that source is going to leave that neutrino with a very certain signature at that time that the genome and the crystal of consciousness recognize, again, as Jupiter or as Mars, because they're all different. They're slightly different. It's like a car accident. You know, a white car bumps into a red car, a little red paint gets on the white, a little white paint gets on the red. It's called communication. It's just, and in that communication, as it pours through us, we're being informed. Don't forget that's material matter. Mm -hmm. If the wind blows, you are now informed that there is wind, are you not? Uh, as other mass pours through you, our genome is being informed by it. You can look at the neutrino ocean like a vast information feed and the ultimate both neural network and the ultimate internet network mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because 14 and a half billion years later, the neutrino ocean has gone through everything. Mm -hmm. That whole, hey, we're all connected. Yeah, we're all connected. The information that pours through you with the t 10 years ago has moved about 10 light years into space. It has informed yeah. something else with your uniqueness. Mm -hmm. You wonder if you're connected out there to the stars? I promise you, you are. Mm -hmm. I get told it all the time. Can I make it simpler? What's the Cliff Notes version? I don't know how to make that simpler. Is any, <laughs> does, does anyone, can anyone, does anyone, is anyone here, your level of confusion? Do you sort of got it? Did I at least get it out good 